Interval signals, also known as tuning signals, are characteristic sounds or musical phrases used in international broadcasting, some domestic broadcasting and even some secret number stations. They're usually played before the start or during breaks in transmissions, but most commonly between programmes in different languages today. In days gone by, they were an extremely useful tool. By the late 1920s, there were around 250 wireless stations on the air in continental Europe alone. Identifying them was not easy. The practice of using interval signals actually began in Europe in the 20s and 30s. It was even difficult in those days to determine exactly what frequency you were on. A wave meter or wave chart was a handy tool for determining the wavelength your radio was on, but these were somewhat of a luxury, and not every listener had one. Identifying the station you were hearing was the next challenge. Broadcast stations had individual characteristics. Many simply gave the name of the station or a phrase associated with it, for example Praha Radio for Radio Prague. People tend to blur the lines between interval signals and station identification signals. Praha Radio would be an identification signal, although it's very easy to blur these lines as you'll see. Another of these characteristics was the interval signal. These were used as a filler to occupy a frequency when no program was being broadcast. They usually lasted for a few seconds before the hour while the transmitter was fired up. Almost every interval signal was different, although there were some similarities. They served as a way of letting the listener know they were tuned to the correct station. Early interval signals consisted of Morse code, gongs and trumpet or bugle calls. As time went on, stations started to use melodies, pieces of music such as the national anthem and other sounds. They were played from music boxes, glockenspiels, xylophones and many other musical instruments before gramophones and tape loops became a common practice. Germany had a large number of stations and many of them used a gong sound. This is quite fitting as a number station operated by the East German army known as gongs and chimes used similar sounds. The Lincolnshire Poacher, the MI6 number station, used the folk tune of the same name, and Magnetic Fields, a mystery number station from an unknown intelligence agency in North Africa, used Magnetic Fields Part 1 by Jean-Michel Jarre. There are other examples, but this isn't a number station video. Then, there were the more bizarre interval signals such as bird noises, crying babies, and other weird and wonderful sound effects. I think the best way to present the diverse types of interval signals to you in this video is to do it by type. I haven't compiled every interval signal because there have been thousands in use over the years and they've changed over the years too in most cases. Instead we'll look at the different types, focusing on the earliest and most unusual ones. Many of the interval signals I'll describe are external services and not domestic. Any additions are welcome in the comments below of course. I also found in my records some station ID cards from the 1920s and 30s era, which were published to help people identify the stations they were receiving. As I mentioned gongs first, we'll start with the main users of the gong sound. The Copenhagen station in Denmark didn't have an interval signal as such, but the end of transmissions were marked by three strokes of a gong. The station in Tallinn, Estonia on the other hand, used the sound of a gong being struck once. In Strasbourg, France, the station there used a deep gong chime lasting 5 seconds. Meanwhile, Toulouse in France used a gong at 50 beats per minute. The Matala station in Sweden used the rapid beat of a gong at 80 strokes per minute. Some other stations used similar gong sounds such as Ankara, Turkey, Kaunas and Kovno in Lithuania, Rival in Estonia, Helsinki in Finland and Kharkov in Russia. HI-59 out of Santa Domingo in the Dominican Republic announced as La Voz de Mocha. An interval signal of five strokes on a gong was employed and they signed off with the national anthem. HI-8Q, also out of the Dominican Republic, announced as La Voz de la Filco. The national anthem closed the program and a gong was used as the interval signal. HLKA out of Seoul, Korea used three ascending gong notes. YNGU, Almanica out of Managua, Nicaragua used one stroke of a gong. VR1H from Maracaibo, Venezuela also used a single gong. Of course, there are others that use the gong and comments are welcome below. Now let's look at some really unusual examples of interval signals. La Voz de Barranquilla out of Colombia, for example, used a number of different interval signals such as the sound of a crying baby, a man's laughter and the roar of a rapidly accelerating car. OBZ, Radio Salas out of Havana, Cuba, used a bugle call. 
On May the 1st, 1941, the Greek minister in London had formally handed to the BBC for safekeeping the interval signal of Athens Radio, a recording of the Arcadian sound of cow and goat bells and a shepherd's flute, and the signal was used each day thereafter by the BBC Greek service until it was returned to Athens Radio after the liberation on the 5th of November 1944. The station at Katowice in Poland used the sound of a steel striking an anvil, a nod to the steel industry in Upper Silesia. Radio Tashkent in Uzbekistan also used the sound of metal striking metal. The northern Rhodesian station at Lusaka used a tattoo of drum beats, while CXA6 in Montevideo, Uruguay used a series of clicks. XECU in Guadalajara, Mexico, also known as Estación del Viajero del Mundo, used a two-tone train whistle, and they signed off with Adios Mariquita Linda. Some stations used bird calls, for example in Italy, the station at Florence used the call of nightingales, as did Genoa, Trieste and Turin. Many stations used a cuckoo call, such as the station at Poznan in Poland and Leningrad, Russia. Radio Club du Bas Rhin, a private station in Strasbourg, France, also used a cuckoo. So did Ljubljana in the former Yugoslavia and Vilno in Poland, with both stations using an artificially produced cuckoo sound. A station at Tegelsigalpa in Honduras used a series of three cuckoo calls. XEBT in Mexico used plucked strings and the sound of a cuckoo call. CS2WA in Lisbon also used a cuckoo. Rome even used a canary, as well as a female announcer that said Radio Roma Napoli at frequent intervals. The voice of Australia's interval signal used the characteristic sound of the kookaburra. Radio 5 in the Republic of South Africa used the call of the Bok Makiri. ZMBC Radio Zambia used the call of the fish eagle. And finally the stations at Riga Latvia and Prague in former Czechoslovakia used the sound of a cock crowing, as did the Malawi Broadcast Corporation. Some stations used a metronome. The transmitter at Vienna, Austria used a metronome interval signal. The number of ticks corresponded to the minutes before transmissions resumed. The Kozitsa station in the former Czechoslovakia used a metronome at 80 beats per minute. A number of German stations also used metronomes. The Berlin Witzleben station employed a metronome at 4 beats per second. The Gleiwitz transmitter used a metronome at 80 beats per minute. Königs Wusterhausen at Ziesen used a metronome at 120 beats per minute, and the station at Leipzig used a metronome at 240 beats per minute. Stations at Riga Latvia, Rabat Morocco, Poznan Poland, Béziers France, Innsbruck and Klangenfurt in Austria, and Bern Switzerland also used metronomes. The Katowice station in Poland used a deep metallic metronome. In Belgrade in former Yugoslavia, the station there sent a metronome at 1 beat per second. The sound was apparently similar to an Indian tom-tom. One station in Leopoldville in Belgian Congo also used a sound resembling a tom-tom. Some stations used the sound of bells. Bells is quite a broad term as I'll explain. Radio Cherbeek in Brussels used the sound of a bell. In France the Fécan station used an irregular bell and the Lyon and Marseille stations used one or two strokes of a bell. The Bordeaux station employed one note struck twice on a dulcimer. The Langenberg Germany station sent the chime of five bells. Stuttgart Germany sent C, D and G on metal bars. The Stockholm Sweden station employed a bell, not as an interval signal as such, but it was struck at 80 beats per minute. In Zimbabwe, Radio 1 used a peal of church bells, and Radio 2 a mix of local instruments. Some stations were described as using chimes, similar to bells. Plenty of South American stations used this type of interval signal. COCX in Havana, Cuba, HI2T in Truillo City, Peru, HJ1ABB in Barranquilla, Colombia, XEMB in Mazatlan, Mexico, and XEQD in Guadalajara, Mexico all used chimes of varying numbers. PRA8 in Recife, Brazil used a fanfare of trumpets followed by chimes. XEBQ in Mazatlan, Mexico, known as La Voz de Pacifico, employed four chimes as an interval signal and signed off with the Luxembourg March. OAX4J, La Voz de Lima in Lima, Peru, used three chimes, and the closing tune was Whistler and His Dog, which brings me to music. Many stations have used music for their interval signals, and so I'll just cover some of the early adopters. There's a whole Wikipedia page on musical interval signals, which I'll link below, as there's no point repeating it all here. Brussels' number one transmitter in Belgium employed the first bars of a Belgian song. 
FPTT in Paris used an irregular interval signal consisting of a gramophone record. PNRS in Paris used bars from a song La Victoire en Chantant. The station in Cologne, Germany used the opening bars of Postillon Song. The Krakow Poland station used three notes, but when relaying Warsaw, it used a few bars from Chopin's Polonaise in F major. HHCM in Port-au-Prince, Haiti used gongs, preceded and followed by a Sousa march. Radio Sweden used a musical piece comprising of the first notes of a song attributed to the Swedish 18th century composer and poet Carl Michael Bellman in the 1950s. Radio Tirana's interval signal consisted of high-pitched chimes in the 1940s. By the 1980s it used part of a patriotic song written in the 1960s called With Pickaxe in One Hand and Rifle in the Other, and it tells how the Albanians managed to throw the Soviets out of their country. The Near East Arab Broadcasting Station in Limassol, Cyprus used Arab music played on a stringed instrument. Some stations used music box music. The Kalundborg Denmark Station employed a music box medley. At Beremunster in Switzerland, the Bern Studio used a music box melody, while the Basel Studio used a simple metronome. This brings us on to the notes category. These are short melodies played using different means. The Bratislava station in the former Czechoslovakia used four notes, and the ID cards show which notes were used. The Natan Vitus transmitter in Paris, France sent two notes along with the abbreviated call Radio Vitus. In Germany, the Merlacher station employed three musical notes, and the station in Munich used six. In Holland, the Hilversum station also sent a medley consisting of six notes. In Hungary, the Budapest station's interval signal consisted of a musical notes melody. The station in Naples, Italy sent popular air in three different keys, whatever that means, as did Rome. Zurich, Switzerland sent two notes. The station at Brno, Czechoslovakia used four notes on a harp. Radio Romania used a series of nine notes. The station in Halsburg, Germany used two notes. D flat and A flat repeated three times in four and a half seconds. At some point in time, Halsburg also sent a few bars of the Missourian folk song Wild Flute at der See. CXA19 out of Uruguay used ascending vibraphone notes along with an identifier announcement. CXA30, Radio Nacional de Montevideo, used 20 musical notes in an ascending scale. Radio Brazil employed a note on a stringed instrument, and HJCT in Bogotá used a three-note interval signal. YV4RC in Caracas, Venezuela employed a single note. Finally, CUM and CUG1 over at San Miguel in the Azores both used 20 notes. Of course, there are many, many more, and comments are welcome below. Now let's move on to Morse code interval signals. The Hamburg, Germany station sent HA in Morse code and also sometimes used a metronome. The Münster, Germany station sent MS in Morse code. Meanwhile, the Frankfurt, Germany station used a metronome at 192 beats per minute along with the letter F in Morse code. Also in Germany, the Bremen station sent BMN, Hanover sent HN, Kiel sent KL and Dresden sent DR. The station at Graz, Austria sent the letter K. The Milan Italy station sent the letter T in Morse code at intervals of 7 seconds. The station at Warsaw in Poland sent the letter W and at Zagreb in former Yugoslavia the station sent the letter U in Morse code. Finally the station in Scotland Switzerland sent RSR. One of the most disputed program items on the BBC schedule in the early days of interval signals was the interval signal. From time to time, gaps occurred in the programming schedule for transmission due to errors in timing and other causes. Where these gaps were of appreciable length, they were filled by announcements or recorded items from a gramophone record selected by the continuity announcer, but short gaps were filled with a recorded interval signal. The noise, often described as a death watch beetle, caused quite some debate. One of the control room engineers, in fact one of the men whose job it was to listen to programmes and switch on the interval signal when it was due, revealed what the interval signal was. This form of the interval signal was introduced in December 1930. It was produced by an electric clock in a felt line wooden box with rope handles near to a Rees microphone. The clock had a ratchet movement which ticked at one second intervals. The average electric clock had its hands dragged round by a ratchet at half minute, one minute or two minute intervals, but the synchronome system had a one second escapement device. 
The master clock was downstairs in the control room and the current impulses from this went to the dozens of clocks all over the building to the special clocks in the studio. In fact, one reason for having this type of clock with a one second tick was that the big studio clocks had a large second hand, which gave the announcer his cue and was a great help in judging program times. The clocks all over the building which were controlled by the master clock in the control room were known as slave dials. The Death Watch Beetle was just one of these slave dials put in a felt lined box. It had a large second hand in addition to the two main hands and it was the noise of the actuating mechanism of this which listeners heard. This wasn't an effective way of providing an interval signal, nor was it very easy for the BBC to think of a better way of working the interval signal. Most of the interval signals such as bells, chimes and cuckoo clocks used at foreign stations were eventually produced from gramophone records and the BBC didn't favour this method because it meant putting on a special record in anticipation of each interval. The BBC's interval signal annoyed a lot of listeners. They chose it thinking it would be unobtrusive at a meeting at Savoy Hill in 1930. After listening to nightingale calls, the sound of the sea and other sounds, they settled on the tick. In February 1934, the BBC trialled a recording of the Bow Bells, produced by a gramophone record on its regional stations without any prior warning. By the 1950s, the BBC's interval signals took one of two forms. They were either the chimes or the strokes of Big Ben, or the six well-known pips. Big Ben signals were derived from a microphone and amplifier connected by line to Broadcasting House. An alternative battery supply was provided for the amplifier and changeover was automatic if for any reason the mains power supply failed. It's interesting to note that it was the first stroke of the hour which indicated the correct time. The chimes were quite erratic. The six pips were controlled by the master clock at Abinger and this clock used to be situated at Greenwich and the signal was therefore referred to as the Greenwich time signal. The signal consisted of bursts of 1kHz tones. This tone, generated in the London control room, was normally greatly attenuated by means of a rectifier bridge circuit. DC control pulses initiated by Abinger removed the attenuation, and the six well-known pips were the result. The final pip denoted the exact four-hour instant. I've done a detailed history of the pips in a video which you can find in the description below. The use of interval signals has declined with the advent of digital tuning systems, but hasn't vanished. Remember to check out the Wikipedia article which features many of the remaining interval signals you can find on air today. And also remember to list any interval signals I've missed that you remember in the comments below.